Hey everybody, Andrew Zimmern, Substack, Ask Me Anything. Please become a paid subscriber. Uh, we really would uh, appreciate it. It helps keep the lights on. That was horrible English. Uh, and allows us to pay for our resources. Um, so please do become a paid subscriber. Uh, one small piece of business. We posted a worst of 2022 and a best of 2022 uh, on Substack and, uh, you know, put it out on social to let people know to check it out. And, um, by a factor of 10 to one, the worst of the year was more popular than the best of the year. Um, does that say something about our truer human nature or is it meaningless? I mean, it, it was staggering to me. Hundreds of thousands of people uh, and this is just one uh, small little bit of data, one data point. On Instagram, uh, over 200,000 people uh, liked the uh, worst of the year and only about uh, 20,000 liked the best of the year. Shocking. But I've also noticed that when I tweet something out that's like super snarky about something, um, it gets lots of likes. And when I tweet something out about a vital urgent uh, cause that we all need to support, it gets like 500 likes. So maybe it does say something about us. Uh, Chuck asks, let's get right to it. Chuck, I'm trying to make more stocks, says Chuck. Good for you. I just made stock the other day. Uh, wanted to know what ideas I had for leftovers once strained, mainly, mainly with vegetables as it feels a little wasteful just discarding them. Um, I know that most, if not all, the flavor and nutrition is now in the stock itself because of the cooking process. That's right, which is why the other stuff is just compost. Sorry. Um, is there anything that can be done with the leftover vegetables and or bones? Well, if you're making a good quality stock and it's, you know, you've made it for long enough, uh, in other words, 24, 36 hours uh, safely on the stovetop or in your oven covered at 225 degrees, 235 degrees, uh, or a very, 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 very low flame, just to maintain a delicate simmer on your stovetop, then you have pulled all the nutrients and flavors out of everything that's gone in there. Um, I dumped stock out the other day, and I just couldn't help nibbling on an onion and a carrot that was in there, and they were flavorless and mushy, because they'd sat in, in a you know, they'd given off all of their goodness for 36 hours in the pot. Um, so sad sad to say there's there's nothing you can do with it. Although it's it, it's as if someone has passed on and their soul has gone to heaven in the stock, but their corporal presence, their body has remained behind. Um, and we can just bury it. We don't need to find another use for it. We don't need to kill them twice. Um, Michael writes, do you have any insights, anecdotes, or other information about my favorite food writer, Jeffrey Steingarten? Oh my God, one of mine too. Uh, you know that Gail Simmons was uh, his assistant for a long time? Although his persona on Iron Chef is curmudgeonly, well, his persona in real life could be curmudgeonly, uh, his books, The Man Who Ate Everything and It Must Have Been Something I Ate, uh, are witty, insightful, chock full of fascinating information and hilarious. Yes. And that was also his personality and probably one of my top 10 favorite people to ever be at a cocktail party or dinner event, uh, with, I remember in the early days of the New York city wine and food festival, the very first one where I hosted a big event, um, he showed up and I, under the excuse of, hey, let me grab you something to drink, just drifted into a corner with him for half an hour and ignored all my other responsibilities because I could listen to him talk food all day long. And he used to ask me the most hysterical questions. He was fascinated uh, by uh, by bizarre foods. He just, I mean, the, the places that I was going and the stuff that I was eating, because he freely admitted, I, I mean, it was incredible. He would say things like, I know I will never go to Madagascar and eat giraffe beetles. And he he knew it. Uh, and he just, but he was so fascinated by food, he couldn't ask me enough questions about the people, possible flavors, textures, you know, what we did at the time, how interesting I found it or lack thereof. Um, he just had a boundless curiosity, incredible sense of humor. And yes, if he chose to, um, 
skewer someone or if we were gossiping or saying things we shouldn't about other people. Um, man, was he hilarious. I mean, just, I, I, and I wish I could repeat some of them, but I can't. But everything you could imagine Jeffrey Steingarten to be uh, is, is how he's in real life. Uh, anyway, um, he, uh, just an impressive, impressive man. And if you have not read The Man Who Ate Everything or It Must Have Been Something I Ate, you should read them. And in that order, I, I prefer The Man Who Ate Everything. I consider that to be one of the best books on or about food and culture that there is. And uh, Jeffrey, just hysterical human being. I had the pleasure of, I did have the pleasure of judging a couple episodes of Iron Chef with him back in the day. And the stuff he muttered under his breath just to get you to laugh while cameras were on you, the guy was he, he, just an amazing human being. Anyway, uh, love you, Jeffrey Steingarten, and love all of you. Keep the questions coming. See you soon. Become a paid subscriber. Thank you.